Hi. I'm Firelight Safety Director Glenn Tripp. Thank you for tuning into Firelight Safety Masterclass. I want to begin this program with telling you that there are 10 portions to the fire department on site. On site occurs, of course, on your building or in your building. Uh, it'll take between four and six hours. It'll be comprised of ten parts. The first three parts are unique to your own building. The fourth part through the tenth part, believe it or not, you probably already know 70% of your on-site is applicable to all the places you will be working. Keep that in mind. The first three parts are unique to your building. The seven parts that follow apply to all buildings. So believe it or not, you already know a passing grade. 70%. Let me tell you about the three parts that are unique to your building. Part one, general building knowledge. Do you know how tall your building is? Do you know where, where the stairwells are located? How they're designated, A, B, C, or D? Things like that. The second part, of your on-site will be the fire plan building knowledge in the event of a fire. That is primarily you want to get the people out of the building, the people that are affected. You want to get them out of the building. In the past, the idea was to evacuate the entire building. But in recent years, it's been concluded that you just need to get out of the building the people who are affected by the fire. They are your top priority. Um, if people in your building are not in any danger, they should be able to stay. The th third part is fire plan building knowledge in the emergency action plan setting. That is, a threat may be outside the building. The whole idea is to keep your people in the building, either where they are, at their workstations, in a shelter-in-place situation, or a in-building relocation where they are put in a safer place than their workstations, or a combination of the two. So, first three parts, general building knowledge, how tall your building is, the stairwell locations, uh, things of that nature. Second part, fire plan building knowledge in the event of a fire where you need to evacuate. And then the third part is fire plan building knowledge in the emergency action plan situation. These things are unique to your building these things you need to know and study. Now, parts four, five, six, seven, eight through 10 are the same no matter what building you, you work in. Okay? So, these things you can learn well in advance. So, Part number four of the 10 parts is fire life safety staff training. In the event of a fire or event of a, a situation, you're not responsible for the entire load. The load, will, it does not all rest on your shoulders. There are people that can help you or that will help you. And these people you must train. There are, for example, upstairs, you have to train floor wardens. 
and then there'll be a deputy for floor warden, and there will be searchers. These people need to be trained. Um, in addition, you have to train a deputy fire life safety director. You have to train a brigade member or members. You have to train um, various other people that will assist you in combating whatever the situation is until the arrival of the fire department. So you need to train these people. That's the fourth part. The fifth part is about active shooters. Active shooters, uh, hopefully you won't encounter this, but there are steps and procedures that need to be followed uh, to keep everyone as safe as possible. That's your fifth part. Now, after that, there'll be a break, 30 minute break or so. Uh, and then when you return, the inspector from the fire department will give you a couple of scenarios. Now, the first scenario, let's see. The first scenario will sound something like this. The fire inspector wants to know how well you know the procedures in the event of a smoke or fire event in your building. There are particular procedures that need to be followed. So he'll give you a, um, a scenario. And most people, when they study these scenarios, they study them generally, numerically, which uh, unfortunately, the fire inspector won't ask you like it's a numerical question. He'll say something like this. You are at work. You are the only fire life safety personnel on duty. An alarm goes off at the fire command station. Assume nothing. How will you address the situation? Your panel is now an alarm. What are you going to do? There are particular steps. They are enumerated. One, two, three, four, five, for example. Uh, report to the fire command station. Acknowledge the alarm on the uh, fire command station. Make sure there's more. There's only one alarm going off on the fire command station. Sometimes there are multiples and we fail to see them. That would be a mistake. So the fire inspector will give you a white sheet of paper and ask you to write down the steps you would take um, in the event of an alarm. And you write that down, best of your ability. And then he's, after seven or so minutes, he's going to ask you to verbalize these steps. Now, if you wrote the steps down, but you didn't verbalize them, he will not give you credit. So make sure you say the things you write or you may remember something else. That would be part six. Now part seven is a, is a situation where it's an emergency action plan situation. And he'll give you a scenario it might sound something like this. These, these steps also, people generally study them in, an, in, a, in a number form. One, step one, step two, step three, step four. But that's not how the inspector presents it to you. So some people get caught off guard. But you won't be because you'll know ahead of time. Part seven is a scenario for an EAP situation. He'll say something like this. You're at work while performing a fire extinguisher uh, examination, uh, just doing your routine daily activities. You learn from a PMO office worker or property management office or office worker from there and a occupant from the 10th floor, uh, a biological agent was released inside the building in a office area on the 10th floor. 
As the Fire Life Safety Director, what actions would you take from the very beginning of the situation to the very end? He'll say, assume nothing, but you're the only Fire Life personnel on duty at the time. Let me repeat that. This is a emergency action plan situation. That means that there's no alarm on the fire command station. You're verbally being informed by the person from the property management office and the occupant that there's a biological uh, agent was released on the 10th floor. So he wants to know what steps you're gonna take. Again, you're gonna get a blank piece of paper, write down your responses, and then after a few minutes, he's gonna ask you to verbalize them. And when you verbalize them, make sure you include all the steps you wrote down. And if you forgot one or two, verbalize them. That way you'll get credit for that. Next, it'll be section number eight. Section eight will be a building scenario in the event of an impairment. He wants to know, do you know the steps? to take in the event of an impairment. You have to inform the property manager, you have to inform the insurer, you have to inform the uh, borough dispatcher, et cetera, et cetera. That's what they're testing. That's section number eight. Section number nine, which is the most fun, will, will be, they wanna know how proficient you are with the fire command station. So before this on-site, make sure you get comfortable with it. Make sure you know the different parts. Make sure you uh, know the difference between the microphone for making announcements versus the telephone for talking on the warden phone. Okay, and Section number 10 will be how proficient you are with the elevator or elevators. Do you know how to call all the elevators down in the, uh, in, by using phase one? Uh, do you know how to operate an elevator with the use of the key inside the uh, elevator in phase two? And do you know how to operate the elevator in independent mode? In addition to you being able to operate them, you might need to teach someone or teach individuals how to operate. In any event, the good news is at the end of section 10, your proficiency with the elevator, the onsite is over. You can breathe. <laughs>